video number 11 we're doing in the series on high school wrestling rules. As you can see behind me, we're here at Martin County High School, what's soon to be Martin County High School. Now it's called Sheldon Clark. It will be Martin County next year, so be looking for that. This video is on potentially dangerous holds. That is in Rule 3, Section 1, Article 11, Rule 5, Section 20, Rule 7, Section 1 and 2, Articles 3 and 4. That is where you will find all the definitions and all the explanations of potentially dangerous holds in high school wrestling. As always, we're going to be showing you some examples. thousands of different ways to get in moves. We're going to show you the principles of what constitutes potentially dangerous. Before we go any further, I want to say thank you to Coach Josh Muncy and Coach Dan Muncy here at Mark County High School for letting me film with their team today. If you haven't done so already, down to your right is the red subscribe button. Hit the subscribe, subscribe to the channel. Let's do this. As we talked about potentially dangerous holds, this is one of the most common holds called potentially dangerous. This is the hand sign, hand behind the head, this one hand. Illegal hold is this, potentially dangerous is this one hand. As you can see, camera if you would, the straight bar across the back. Now, as you can see his arm makes that good 90 degree angle. As soon as that elbow joint is forced past 90 degrees, right there, that'd be potentially dangerous hold. So as long as that arm is on the back, 90 degrees, we're good. When it breaks 90, that's when the potentially dangerous hold occurs. Now if his arm comes off of his back, if he's trying to run a bar or run a wing or something, his arm comes off the back, that is also a potentially dangerous maneuver. A very common maneuver you will see in jiu-jitsu tournaments, Eddie Bravo made it famous, called the twister. Wrestling, we call it the guillotine. Now we know the guillotine to jiu-jitsu practitioners, MMA, is the headlock with the neck. This is our type of guillotine. Now this hole can get potentially dangerous really fast. We're going to show you a slow example. Nobody wants to get hurt here. That's not what we're doing this for. We're doing this to help you guys out. We're going to instruct our wrestlers to do a guillotine. We're going to walk you through when this hold becomes potentially dangerous. Now, I know it looks painful, and it is, but that's what our job is, is to make sure that if it gets to a spot where it's dangerous, we'll stop it before it gets that. So, Cameron, if you would, wrestlers, go ahead. You can see when he gets his arm back here, this the part on the shoulder is what we got to be watching for. We tell the wrestler, keep it straight, wrestler. Go ahead, go ahead. Keep it straight, keep it straight, keep it straight. Now, when he locks the head, near fall criteria is met. One, as you guys learned in the other video, two, three, four, five. Once he gets to this position, the potentially dangerous situation, for the most part, ends. Now, there could be an exception to that. I know that. But the potentially dangerous part is when the arm is coming back. Another very common maneuver you will see in wrestling is the chicken wing. It's a very, very common move to make a turn like for a fall or near fall, whatever the case may be. Like the, um, the bar across the back, as soon as it breaks 90, the hole will become potentially dangerous. With the chicken wing, as you can see our wrestler has his arm in, as long as he's keeping it straight across his back, we're good. You would go ahead and make it like a turn wrestler. Start working for something. As long as he keeps it right there, we're good. Now go back, back and reset, guys. When his arm breaks that 90 degree to come up along the axis of his back like that, that's when the hold is potentially dangerous. That's when it's got to be stopped. Stop the hold, they'll break. Anytime, right the camera, just a mind. Anytime a hold is broken for potentially dangerous, it resets as if we're out of bounds. We know one's up, one's down. You guys have seen that a bunch of times. I want to make that clear. The dangerous situation that you will see is when the bottom wrestler stands up with the top wrestler with his legs in and all supporting weight of the top man is on the bottom wrestler. We're going to show you an example of that real here. Guys, you go ahead. Comes up, he comes up, puts his legs in like so. That would be stopped for potentially dangerous. And go back and we reset as if we're going out of bounds. This is a very common hold right here. Like I said in the technical violation video, Casey and Katami scarf hold where the region I referee here in Kentucky, this is known as a cowboy. I've heard it called a thousand different names. That's the thing about wrestling holds, they have a thousand different names. 
principle is, you guys know anytime that a, the offensive wrestler has a headlock, he has to have an arm above the elbow. Now, this wrestler, the offensive wrestler, he's meeting near fall criteria like he's supposed to. This is when the hold becomes potentially dangerous. This top wrestler can hold this and squeeze and tripod up all he wants until the fall happens or at the end of the period, whichever comes first. But if the bottom wrestler makes this move illegal by pulling his arm out, then it becomes a potentially dangerous hold. We would stop the match. No penalty points would be given. There are no penalty points for potentially dangerous maneuvers. Remember that. That's the signal, no points. When a legal move is become illegal, has become illegal, that is a potentially dangerous hold. All right, guys, this is an addition to what we already have. I forgot, it's been a long day. Split scissor, I know this isn't the best version, but you get an idea. Anytime that the, any body part is moved or stretched outside of its normal range of motion, that's potentially dangerous. There's this, all right guys, you can break this. There's this. Another one is the toe hold. That is a potentially dangerous move. Cameron, if you would, move around here, please. When this ankle is forced back, that is also potentially dangerous. And as you can see, this position right here, if the wrestler would move his arms up, we're going to do this for a second. Raise your arms just a second. All right. You can break, guys. You can break. Anytime that the neck, like that, the stack, that's potentially dangerous. So there you have it. Potentially dangerous holds. That's the signal for potentially dangerous. No penalty points as long as it is called potentially dangerous. Now, rule book 2018-2019 edition, that is in rule 3, section 1, article 11, rule 5, section 20, and in rule 7, section 2, articles 1, 2, 3, and 4. And yes, I have a cheat sheet beside of me in case you're wondering, my eyes are going to that side. So, like I said before, thank you to Coach Josh and Dan Muncy for letting me film. Thank you to Sean Clark, aka the New Mark County High School, for letting me film. Video number 11 in the series. See you guys on the mats.